Nancy Pelosi has overseen some of the biggest losses in the history of the Democratic Party in the last 11 years since she became Speaker of the House. Some Democrats have had enough. They're suggesting maybe it's time for a leadership change, but they should have known better. Criticizing Nancy Pelosi is sexist. Watch this. I've heard that argument used so many times before, and I think it, it really reflects the sexism that still exists in, in, in politics today. I think uh, Nancy Pelosi is held to a different standard than others are. The vilification of her in a very sexist way, quite frankly, is what's led to this discussion. <laughs> So good. Well, journalist and author Kathy Rue joins us tonight. Kathy, thanks a lot for coming on. So this is, I love this tape. I've watched it like 19 times. I mean, this really is a pile up at the, at the four-way intersection of identity politics here. So really? what that clip does not reveal is that one of the people who called for Nancy Pelosi to maybe step aside at the age of 77 um, is Linda Sanchez of California, who's, of course, right. a female, Latina, Democrat. Right. So here you have some guy telling a woman that she's a sexist for criticizing Nancy Pelosi. I'm losing track of who's got privilege here. How does this work? Right, well, I mean, we're not, Linda Sanchez isn't necessarily right because she's a Latino woman. For t saying I that, agree. I mean, right. yes, and maybe others are, others are sexist when it comes to Nancy Pelosi. So I do believe that. I think he is correct there. I don't think Linda Sanchez necessarily was sexist by saying what she said, maybe jealous. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is a pioneer. She's a powerful woman. Who knows? Maybe she's a little jealous. Well, you I mean, I, you know, look, I'm not the kind of guy who traffics in epithets like sexist, but it's a, I mean, conforming a bit to a stereotype for you, don't you think, with respect to suggest that Linda Sanchez is jealous? No. Like one woman looks upon another woman's success well, and is I don't jealous? I mean, that, would make that kind of a gender comment. stereotype. It doesn't, it no? doesn't, well, no, it just doesn't make sense. Nancy Pelosi is not a liability. Her caucus supports her. Why would she be there? She would not be there if she were a liability. So Linda Sanchez's well, comments make no sense whatsoever. So I can't. Well, look, it's not my, it's not, not my fight. I'm, I'm not a fight, but here, I mean, I'm not a Democrat, so like, you know, have fun, but here are the numbers, and maybe this is part of the reason. So after the 2006 election, it was, you know, midway through Bush's second term, Democrats retook the House, Pelosi became Speaker. That year, they had 233 seats in the House of Representatives. A lot has happened since Donald Trump got elected, and now Democrats have 194 seats in the House. That's a massive and historic loss. Meanwhile, Democrats have lost over 1,000 right. seats across the country with Pelosi as the most visible leader of their party. So maybe just by the numbers that suggest abject failure. But the numbers also do show that politics um, can be quite sexist. We have, a, this nation has 51% women, yet we're 20% of Congress, 20% in the House, 20% in the Senate. So, and right. now we have, have 23 cabinet members. We have four that are women, less than ever, half than we had with um, President Obama. So right. the numbers are showing that women are not necessarily making huge strides in Washington, D.C. This is not a great What's time to be a woman. In DC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, luckily, electoral success is not the only measure of success, thank God. But, it, and, and I'm sure it's a very complicated thing. I mean, there are a lot of reasons for what you just described. Right, but, but to DC describe is it, the whole thing filled right now. There's no denying that. I don't even know what that means. That's not how it feels to me, actually. There's, but whatever, leaving that, leaving like generalizations like that aside, okay. Donald Trump got the majority of married women to vote for him. Were they sexist for voting for Donald Trump over a feminist? Well, three million people, more, three million people voted for Hillary Clinton, more voted for Hillary Clinton than Donald right. Trump. So she did get more voters. No, so. but I'm just, I'm just talking about the sexism. I mean, I want to relitigate the whole election, right, but just right. as, a, just to address the question of sexism. Right. So here you have a candidate, Donald Trump, widely denounced as a sexist by Democrats right. and many Republicans too, right. and yet he wins the majority of married women, actual women, over the female candidate, the pro-woman candidate. And now we're what seeing does that tell the you? things that he does have been so so sexist. The things that he's done okay, while but, he's been okay. in office have but been horrible for women. That? And and he hasn't right, put okay. women in a p powerful positions. Uh, he hasn't so been why, good to women. So why did they? Okay, but why would they vote for him? It's it's a little confusing. Like, well, why they would the majority they he was of married bring change, and now he's just bringing disappointment? So they made a mistake. 
Right. But I guess the only point I'm making, and I don't, you know, I don't want to debate the Trump legacy or, right. or the last election, but right. when you hear people write off pretty complicated phenomena like the election or Nancy Pelosi's 11 years leading her party in the House as just sexism, will you concede perhaps it's kind of a simplistic explanation for what's actually going on? It is, but she did have a moment where men were speaking it, it above is. her and she did point out that no one was paying attention to her. It was a moment where she was the only woman in the room and the Washington Post pointed out that that was a sexist moment in D.C. So, so maybe he was referring oh. to those moments that she has experience. There's a lot of sexism in D.C. and in, in politics, in American politics. How, it's alive well, those well. are general, but may I just ask you one last final question? Yeah. Nancy Pelosi is, you know, the most f powerful female leader in a, Washington. A She's also one of the... Yes. Great. But she's also one of the richest people in Washington, one of the richest people in the country. Right. So how rich and how powerful do you, can you get until you, you're not really allowed to complain about being a victim anymore, if you see what I'm saying. Well, when at, men at what point does it become kind of ludicrous? When, when she can talk and be heard like, like her counterparts, like her male counterparts, then she could say that. But if she's not treated equally, she could keep complaining, as far as I'm concerned. So, okay. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't matter how rich and how it powerful she is. Matter. She no. can still call herself a victim and you'll still believe her. If she, if she still is a victim, absolutely. A victim has a right to speak That's up funny. no matter how much money oh. that person makes. Absolutely. Yeah. Hilarious. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me.